Well, good morning, everyone. So glad to see you all here with us to join us for worship this morning. Um, just got a few quick announcements that uh, I just want to make for you guys. First, uh, most important, we are so glad to see Pastor Jeff here. Um, he, he's feeling better, but I just want to keep praying for him. Um, then I just want to remind you about a couple other things uh, real quickly. First, this Wednesday, there's going to be some big things going on uh, for our children. We're going to have our Happy Birthday Jesus Christmas party. Um, so that's going to start at 545. We just want to uh, in invite all of our children and their families to please come out for this. We will have Santa there. He's going to read the uh, Christmas story to us. So uh, pl please come out for that. And also, um, on the same night, if you have uh, a youth that's going to be going to the uh, Look Up Lodge winter camp. Uh, we're going to have a very, very brief uh, parent meeting up in the youth room. Um, so that'll start at 6. So just going to go over just some packing list things, some other logistical details uh, for that uh, weekend. So um, if you can't make it to that, please just give me a call or shoot me a text or something, and I can fill you in on the information. But love to have you guys there. And um, yeah, that's all the announcements that I have. We're so glad that you are here. So I want to ask if everyone could, if you're able, please stand and take a few moments to greet one another. Would you please join me in prayer? Father, we're just so thankful for another opportunity to come and gather together, uh, God, just to worship you and lift up your name. And Father, we just pray for this service. We pray, God, that every song that is sung, whether it is a congregational hymn or, Father, whether it's the uh, cantata or, or whatever we do, whatever we sing, whatever words we say, God, that it would magnify and glorify and honor your name because that's what we're here to do. Um, we're here to worship you and to honor you. And so, Father, we just pray for your blessings on the service. Um, Father, we pray for, um, for every person that has any part in this service this morning. We pray that um, you would get them out of the way and that you would be glorified in, in everything. So, God, we thank you and we praise you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Let's sing some Christmas carols.
the chorus, first verse, and chorus again. Got to do the chorus first. It's a music thing. <laughs> chorus. All right, that's the chorus. chorus. All right, here we go. Go tell me on the mountain. Our scripture reading today comes from Galatians 3, verses 1 and 2. If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on this earth. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning and ask your blessings on this, your church, Lord, and the people that fill it to worship you. We ask now that you bless these tithes and offerings for the ongoing of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, uh, I've been thinking about this all week. I've been missing Pastor Jeff up here. And I've been watching him for three years. And now I understand why he does it. It's hot up here. <laughs> My homage to Pastor Jeff.
ancient prophecies spoken by faithful servants of ages past echo even now. The time has come. The longing is over. The mystery is about to be revealed. The word of the Father will soon be made flesh, and all of creation will rejoice. This is the assurance of heaven. What God speaks, he'll do. What he promises, he will fulfill. And so the ancient prophecies began to be seen for what they truly were, the promises of God, promises as reliable as the one who made them, promises kept, each and every one of them, in Jesus the Messiah.
a God of promise and fulfillment could create from the poorest circumstances and the most meager surroundings a dazzling display of his glory yet that's exactly what he did a child was born whose kingdom authority would surpass the realm of earthly principalities. This child was born to be a savior. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, he has come Emmanuel. Here on earth with us to dwell, mighty God and Prince of Peace, Savior, 
What kind of king leaves riches for poverty, splendor for humility, and unspeakable joy for earthly sorrow? Though the very best we could offer him was still unworthy of him, even so he came. While the little town of Bethlehem slept, unaware that the wonder of wonders had appeared right before their slumbering eyes, the skies just outside the city of David exploded with a startling announcement. To his word, God had kept his promise of a savior, a deliverer, a multitude of the heavenly host, proclaimed the glory of God, and earth would never be the same.
blessed angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same how that in bethlehem was born the son of god by name majesty in a manger, a savior in swaddling clothes, son of Mary and son of God, heralded by angels and worshiped by shepherds, God's promised gift to us to be cherished, to be honored, to be adored.
Soon the Bethlehem star will fade and the song of the angels will be silenced. The joy we experience now will recede and the wonder of season will be a distant memory. But the divine assurance, the promise of God with us, this is the blessing of Christmas. Yes, the prophecies have been spoken, and they echo even now. Our longing is over, for the mystery has been revealed. What God has said, He has done. What He has promised, He has fulfilled. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given. The blessing of Christmas is found in a promise, the promise of God with us, not just for today, but forever.
Let's give one more hand to our choir for such an amazing job. Thank you all so, so much. That was absolutely wonderful. And such a great reminder of the promises that God has not only made, but that he kept. And that sending his son Jesus, he, he kept all the promises that he made. And, and, and thinking about what um, I was just going to briefly share with you all this morning, on the front of the cover of um, the music that the choir has, and you actually have it on the back of the sheet there, there's a verse um, in Isaiah chapter 9, um, and verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You know, and I read that, and I began to think about the promises that, that God, he made, that he, he was going to send his son, he was going to send Messiah, he was going to send a Savior. And, and a lot of times, especially around this time of year at Christmas, we, we think about those promises and we think about that baby. You know, a lot of times, I know I'm guilty of this too, especially at Christmas, I will think about the baby and sometimes I'll lose sight of what that baby was promised to do. That promise that God made to us to send this, this baby, to send this Messiah, it wasn't just some ordinary promise. It was a sacred promise. I, I look at Ender and, and I just try to imagine, I try to put myself in that mindset of, of God that, that his only son, that he would willingly send his only son to the earth to not just be born as a baby, a, a frail, weak child, but to be born with the promise that he was going to die. I mean, what kind of a sacred promise that was. What holy promise that was going to impact us forever. So this morning, what, what I want to invite um, you, you to join me on this morning, and, and this is not going to be um, a full sermon, but I want us to walk through together Isaiah 53, so we can see this, this promise of this baby for what it truly meant, the sacredness behind this promise. So if you would, turn with me to Isaiah 53, and we're actually going to um, begin in Isaiah chapter 52, and, and we're going to start in verse 13, and we're just going to read this together and try to point out some of the, the big notes of this promise of, of who Jesus was going to be. So if you, if you found Isaiah 53, um, jump back just a little bit to Isaiah 52, verses 13 through 15. And before we begin reading, I just want to say a quick prayer for us, and then we're going to see what the Word of God says to us this morning. So would you pray with me? God, we just thank you for this time where we get to just turn to your Word and, and, and probably let you speak to us. And so, God, I pray that that is what would happen in, in these next few moments. God, we've already been blessed through the singing of your Word, the singing of your promises, through the presenting of, of, of what you've done in, in bringing Jesus to us. And so, Father, now during this time, as we've already reflected, we've already been reminded of those promises, God, that you would help us to see exactly who Jesus was promised to be, and that you would seek to us directly from your word this morning. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. So what I would like us to do is we're just going to read a few verses and together, and we'll go through this, um, this whole chapter. So first in Isaiah 52. I want to read verses 13 through 15. It says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, so his vis visage was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. For shall he sprinkle many nations? Kings shall, cut, shall shut their mouths at him. For what he had not been told 
them they shall see, and what they had not heard they shall consider. So first, I want to point out a couple phrases for you. All right, so first in verse 13, we see that this verse says that my servant, so every time in Isaiah where you see the servant, my servant, is talking about Jesus. These are uh, passages of prophecy that are referring to Jesus, and we, so we see this servant shall be exalted, extolled, and be very high. So this passage it begins with the exaltation of Jesus, that Jesus is going to be magnified and glorified, that he will be exalted, extolled, he will be very, very high. And you know, we, we see in, in throughout of the word of God, that we know that Jesus was present. Jesus has always existed. He has been right there. The Philippians tells us that Jesus actually left all the glory, all the majesty of heaven. So we see this exaltation of Jesus, but then we move right into verse 14. It says, Just as many were astonished at you, so his visit, visage was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So this promised Messiah was going to be exalted, was going to be praised, but he was also sent to be humiliated. We see the exaltation of Jesus followed right with it, the humiliation. I want you to think about what Jesus would one day grow up to endure. He would endure betrayal of his closest friends. He would be mocked and ridiculed. He would be beaten, spat upon, clothed ridiculously, and then hung to a cross to die. The ultimate humiliation. But then in verse 15, we see why. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths at him. For what had not been told them, they shall see. And what they had not heard, they shall consider. The sprinkling of many nations. We, we see this idea um, the sprinkling, that is used a lot in the Old Testament to refer to the application of, you know, atoning blood to cover the guilt of sin, to cleanse sinners of their impurity. So, so we see here that Jesus is presented as one that would come exalted, but then humiliated, and then whose blood would be sprinkled for the cleansing of sin for the world. And that's who Jesus was. That's what this promise was. Not just for a baby to be born, but for a baby to be born that would grow up to be humiliated and then die for us. And this chapter moves on, and I'm not going to read every verse because it's, it's a very long chapter, but, and we could be here for a while, but I want to point out just a couple things to you as it points to Jesus. First, I want to look at verses 2 and 3 of 53. It says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Look at how Jesus was presented, that he was, what he was going to be like. See, we don't have to wonder what Jesus would look like, what he would be like. We're told Jesus was not someone that was going to be looked at and was going to be thought much of. He was going to be a man that people would look at and probably glance away from. They wouldn't think, oh, this, this is, this is, it. no. They wouldn't think this is it, this is him. It says he was going to be despised and rejected, that he, he had no form or comeliness. He, he did not come in splendor, but he came in frailty. He came as a man. This baby would grow up to be hated, to be despised, to be rejected for you and for me. He didn't come as the king that he could have. He didn't come as the, the Lord of heaven's armies. He didn't come in power. He came in humility and frailty. 
not only did he come in that manner, but the reason he came was not to conquer, was not to rule. But we see that in verses 4 and 6. 4 through 6, there are many times where we, we can see it says, Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrow. Down in verse 5, it says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. See, Jesus didn't come to take over, to rule, to reign. He came as a substitute. He came in our place. He came for us. Look how many times it says for our, for our shortcomings, for our sin, for our failures. That's what that baby that was born in a manger, that's what he came for, was for our mistakes, our sin, our iniquities, our rebellion against God. And it says that he would come not just for that, but in our place, in place of. Verse 6 says, like sheep, we have gone astray. We have turned away, everyone, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. See, this language, it's like in Leviticus where the priests would put their, their hand over the head of a lamb and they would put all of the sin onto that animal from a person and then that's when that animal would be sacrificed. Jesus bore all of that. The promise of that baby that was to come was going to take on your sin and carry it to the cross. And I don't think we should ever lose sight of that. I don't think we should ever forget the reason all those promises held with them the weight of the sacrifice of Jesus. We can continue reading and, and see how Jesus would be beaten, how he would, he would be marred. We could see that his body would not be recognizable. But in verses 7 through 9, I encourage you to read these. But several times in those verses, it says things would happen. He would be oppressed. He would be afflicted. But he would never open his mouth. Jesus willing, willingly took all of this. And not once did he open his mouth. Think about that. I mean, the, the one person in the world, the one human that could have stopped anything, that could have opened his mouth and said, stop, and people just freeze, he didn't say a word. Because Jesus was willing. And not only was Jesus willing, but it glorified God. This is probably one of my favorite verses now, uh, at, since I've read it and we were going through it with the youth, youth but Isaiah 53, verse 10. It says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Can, can you think about that for a moment? I, Ender has not been feeling well the past week or so, and, and he's just been in so much pain. And, and you know, every time he'll just cry, it does not please me. I hate seeing him cry. I hate seeing him hurt. And to think that God, in all his glory, all his splendor, looked down, saw Jesus being beaten and broken, hung to a tree, and it pleased him. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. I just, I can't imagine... I can't imagine the love that God must have for us to willingly do that and be pleased with his one and only son. I mean, that love must be a love like any other because I'm sorry. It, it kills me to watch him hurt. It's not even close to even being tolerable sometimes, but it pleased God. Because he knew through his suffering we could gain forgiveness and freedom. 
That's why Jesus came. That was the ultimate promise. Genesis 3.15, God promised that one day a son would be born, that his heel would be bruised, but he would crush the serpent's head. That was Jesus. That promise, a sacred, holy promise that offers us eternal life forever. So here's what I want to challenge you with this morning. If you read through Isaiah 53, you'll see that many times it's talked about Jesus, that people would look upon him and they didn't recognize who he was. Even in the New Testament and the Gospels, we can see that Jesus came displaying the full glory of God, yet the people missed it. Have you missed? Have you missed who Jesus really is? I mean, please don't, and especially in this time of Christmas where we celebrate his coming, don't miss. Don't miss who Jesus really is. Don't miss what he really came to do. Don't miss it. Don't overlook it. This morning, I just want to challenge all of us. Reflect on the sacrifice that Christ has made for you. These promises that God made were so that you and I could all experience that forgiveness by his sacrifice. This morning, has there ever been a time where you have came before Jesus? You've given him, you've laid all your sin before him and you've declared him as your Lord and Savior. You've turned from that sin and you followed him. If there's never been a time where you've done that, you're letting all these wonderful promises of God pass you by. Don't wait. Today could be the day of your salvation. Or maybe, maybe you have accepted the Lord. Don't let this Christmas season pass you by without realizing the true promise that this baby is also going to grow up to be a man. It would be despised, beaten, rejected, and killed for you. This morning, the altar is open. You come and respond as God would have you to respond. Would you pray with me? Father, we just thank you so much for all the promises that you have given us. And, and Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that you promise not just to send a king, not to send a ruler. Father, you, you promise to send a savior, one that would bear our sins, and pay that price for us. So Father, we are just so thankful for that this morning. And God, I just pray that you would speak to our hearts and call us to respond. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Would you please stand?
Amen. I'm going to ask if you would all please be seated. Um, Rod is going to come up and lead us in just a special business meeting real quick, and then he'll close out our service.